Good morning. You're taking a live look over downtown Dublin. Your time now at 630 on this Monday. I'm Ashlyn Webb and I'm TJ Anthony. Alex Forbes has a look of what feels like this Constantly changing weather, Alex. What's going on? Uh, it's Georgia. You know how it goes around here. It's going to be 50 today. It's going to be 70 by the time we get to Wednesday, and we're going to get down to like 28 somewhere in between there as we look live over Dublin this morning. And we're waking up to temperatures in the 40s. You got 45 in Macon, 44 in Warner Robins. Nobody's woken up that sensor in Perry yet. 45 in Milledgeville as well. You got 44 in Forsyth, 39 the actual air temperature now in Monticello, 45 in Dublin as we just talked about, 43 down in Unadilla, and 42 to get your morning started in Macon County up to the north running into some 30s up in the North Georgia mountains. All of us going to be in the 30s and maybe some 20s tomorrow morning across central Georgia as colder air from the northwest continues to spill down to the south and east. So the cold front has moved through. Here comes the high pressure. That's going to set the stage for a quiet next two days in the 40s for the next few hours, 50 or so by the time we hit the noon hour, eventually to a high temperature right around 55 today, calling it partly cloudy. Sunrise comes your way right around 734 this morning. But in the days ahead, we are going to dip down below that freezing mark and we do have the threat of storms by the time we get to Wednesday. The timing of that and the threats coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll check in with you shortly. Uh, this morning we continue to follow a fatal shooting in South Macon. A father and husband is dead after he and his family were shot in their driveway on Thoroughbred Lane Friday night. Bibb County Sheriff's Office says the family was transported to the hospital where 52 year old Panal Kumar Patel later died. Not anything that we would ever expect to happen here. Chris Noppy has lived in the area for eight years and says hearing that a family had been shot nearby was shocking. Deputies say the call came in at around 11 p.m. that both parents and their child had been shot. We were concerned, surprised, worried, you know, because with the unknown, you really kind of worry about what's what's going on. Um, so it's just it's just unfortunate. People in the neighborhood say they plan to hold a candlelight vigil in the coming days. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office says the shooting remains under investigation. We now know the identity of a woman killed in a traffic accident just on Friday. Coroner Leon Jones says that the pedestrian is 40-year-old Stephanie Glover. Glover was walking on Pionona Avenue near Harris Road around 7 p.m. on Friday in front of O'Reilly Auto Parts. She attempted to cross the road and then walked into the path of an oncoming car. Now she was transported to the hospital where she later died. The accident is still under investigation. Plus this morning, a Macon woman is in jail in connection to the death of 39 year old Wayman Dancy of Forsyth. Dancy was found dead with a single gunshot wound inside of an apartment complex at Walnut Hill apartment complex just Friday night around 11. Jada Simone Johnson was arrested and charged with his murder on Saturday. Jail records say Johnson lived at Walnut Hill Apartments. The shooting is still under investigation. If you have any information, you can call the Bibb Sheriff's Office at 478-751-7500 or the Macon Regional Crime Stoppers at 1-877-68-CRIME. A Washington County high school teacher is behind bars this morning after being charged with two counts of child sexual exploitation. The school's website says 32-year-old Michael Dendy of Milledgeville teaches drama and is chairman of the Fine Arts Department. The Sheriff's Office and County Board of Education Police say the arrest follows a month-long investigation into allegation of child pornography. Sheriff Joel Cochran says he expects more charges and arrests to be made soon. A court rejected convicted murderer Stephen McDaniel's request to throw out his guilty plea, and now he's taking that appeal to a federal court. This comes nearly nine years after McDaniel admitted to killing Mercer student Lauren Giddings. In 2011, McDaniel was charged with murdering Giddings, a fellow Mercer law student. He pleaded guilty three years later. Since then, he's filed several appeals and petitions aimed at overturning his conviction. In December, he lost another round. U.S. District Court Judge Mark Treadwell dismissed McDaniel's argument that prosecutors used stolen documents against him. Treadwell didn't rule on whether that was true, but found that McDaniel had missed the deadline for filing his petition. Last Tuesday, McDaniel appealed that ruling to the Federal Court of Appeals in Atlanta. Georgia's State Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, and Richmond County Superior Court judges already rejected McDaniel's appeals.
This morning, two teen teenagers are now suspects in a break in at Warner Ro at a Warner Robins home. The Houston County Sheriff's Office said it happened around 5 a.m. last Monday. They said a family at a home on Brady Dri Drive woke up to the sound of breaking glass. Once the teens saw the people living there, they ran off. The Sheriff's Office say the two suspects are about 14 years old. If you have more information, call the Housing County Sheriff's Office at 478-542-2085. The time is now 635. This morning, we're continuing to learn more about the tragic crash that killed UGA offensive lineman Devin Willock and UGA recruiting staffer Chandler LaCroix. A 911 call from an officer on the scene sheds light on the early Sunday morning crash. And it looks like based on the damage, she clips the curb, straightens it out, and goes into the power pole and trees and flips and launches. The one football player that's DOA at the scene got ejected, it looks like to me. And the female driver, they are rushing her to the hospital, but I don't think she's going to make it. Now the driver he's referencing there is Chandler LaCroix. Devin Willock's mother announced he, she has no plans for any legal action in this case at this time. Another player, Warren McClendon, was in the car and survived without serious injuries. And another staffer, Tori Bowles, remains in the hospital. Your time is now 637. As we look into the 13 WMAZ archive, we go back 30 years ago to 1993, when then President Bill Clinton signed new legislation that put restrictions on abortion. At the time, Georgia Congressman J. Roy Rowland was one of only two doctors in the House of Representatives. Rowland shared his thoughts about the changes with a young reporter who may be a little familiar to you. That's Raymond Tuff, 13 WMAZ's own. We had some legislation uh, this last Congress that would put severe restrictions uh, on the way that uh, this, uh, this, abort this uh, fetal tissue uh, would be handled. And uh, I supported that and I thought that uh, it was structured in such a way that it would not in any way encourage abortions. The 2022 Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade reversed the constitutional right to abortion, giving the power to regulate abortion to individual states. On a side note, J. Roy Rowland was a Democratic representative who served in both the Georgia House and the U.S. House representing Central Georgians for nearly two decades. The Wrightsville native passed away April 2022 at the age of 96. You'll find more exclusive clips from 13 WMAZ Archive on our YouTube channel. Just look for the Straight From The Heart Archive playlist. Today, the Megan Mayhem players will pass out donated items to people at daybreak. This weekend, folks at the Megan Mayhem game had the opportunity to collect donations for the organization. Requested items include canned goods, small toiletries, and cold medicine. After the first Mayhem goal, fans got to throw their donations onto the ice. I love that. Lisa Roberts, a season ticket holder, says she's teaching her son the importance of helping others. Anytime there's donation sites, we usually do that just so he knows that you know, there's other people that are less fortunate. And we all need to help each other. <laughs> Again, the Mayhem players will pass out items today to people at daybreak. Right now, Robbins Air Force Base is looking for a few good men and women interested in a full-time job in computer science or electrical engineering. The base is actively looking to connect with people who want to learn more about computer science, electrical engineering, and computer engineering. The 402nd Software Engineering Group will lead the job fair. The engineering group works with the Department of Defense and Air Force on weapons and radar systems. The job fair is on Thursday, January 26th from 2 to 6 p.m. The location, Projects Energy off of Park Place Drive in Warner Robins. Benefits of the job include an up to 25% signing bonus. The time is now 639. You all know exactly what that music means. We want to kick off the week right with some celebrations. So do you or someone special to have something to celebrate? Show us what you're excited about, whether that's a birthday, anniversary, job promotion, or just a small win that feels big. So text us your celebrations and shout outs to 478-752-1309. And look, do not forget to give us your name and the name of any person or event you may be celebrating. Check back with us on Friday to see if you get featured. And did you get an emotional high from the holidays? And now that excitement of finally seeing family, friends may be gone. This is Mental Health Monday. We tell you about how that change can affect your day-to-day -day life. Plus, we all grew up learning it, but some consider cursive a lost art. Stick with us to see young students leading a cursive comeback. Your time now, 6.40. And Alex, it sounds like we will have 
a much less drearier day than oh, we did yeah. yesterday. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, the only silver lining about yesterday, and TJ alluded to it earlier, great mm. sleeping weather. I think I slept like one o'clock. Amazing yeah. sleeping weather, great Netflix weather, yep. Hulu, yeah. everything. TV. But you know what? I'm paying for it right now because I did not get much sleep last <laughs> night oh, because no. I slept in. <laughs> And here we are at 640 in the morning and we are going to keep things rolling right along with a lot of coffee. Here's a live look over downtown. We got temperatures in the 40s out there. 45 in Macon. It feels like 40 though with that wind out of the west at about 9 miles an hour. 43 in Forsyth. The actual air temperature now in Monticello down to 39. 41 in Taylor County. 41 in, in, Make, in Montezuma in Macon County. 45 in Rochelle and 43 in Eastman. But we factor in that wind we have out there. It feels like 36 in Eatonton. 38 in Milledgeville. Feels like 39 in Warner Robin and feels like 38 over in Americas this morning. Radar spinning around from Twiggs County and was working yesterday, that's for sure. This morning, not so much because we don't have any rain out there. All the showers and storms from yesterday have pushed off the coast, but not after leaving. This is just the past 24 hours now. Over an inch of rain in several spots across central Georgia, including over two inches of rain parts of southern Twiggs, northern Bleckley there, another little spot there near Unadilla in Dooley County, and then just the, to the southwest of Cordell. And if you didn't get at least an inch of rain, you got pretty close to it, at least everyone getting over a half inch of rain as we've worked our way over the past 24 hours. So the showers, they are gone. Here comes high pressure building in across central Georgia. That's going to keep us quiet for the next few days. This morning, a 50 or so by about the noon hour into the mid-50s later on this afternoon. Mostly clear skies. The clouds we're going to see will be during the morning hours. But then for tomorrow, waking up at the freezing mark, if not below it, in several spots across central Georgia. In fact, I think this model's not taking us cold enough. I think a lot of us are going to get down into the 20s before we rebound close to 60 tomorrow afternoon. The wind coming in off the Atlantic. Moisture arriving overnight Tuesday into Wednesday before storms work their way through central Georgia Wednesday morning. So coming across Interstate 85 right around 6 a.m. and then working their way through central Georgia during the mid morning hours. The potential again for damaging winds and maybe even a spin up tornado. We're going to be watching that threat here in the days ahead. So a morning to be weather aware Wednesday morning. Certainly going to need at least the rain jacket and umbrella as you head to work in school. That will begin to get out of here by about the noon hour or maybe even say 1 p.m. And then for the rest of the week, we will begin to dry out here in central Georgia. Thursday looking dry as does Friday. Our next chance of rain does not look to arrive until we get to the back half of the weekend. It's going to be on Sunday, but it's going to be late in the day on Sunday. So I'm expecting overcast conditions to start the day, but then the rain arriving Sunday night into Monday. So into the end of January, we're going to be talking about these high temperatures uh, close to 70 by the time we get to Wednesday. 50s each and every, each and every day outside of that. 45 for the bus stop later on this morning. 52 for the recess hour and 55 will be your high temperature with a mix of sun and clouds under partly cloudy skies. Sunrise uh, just uh, under an hour away now. 734. Here's the seven day forecast. 70 for Wednesday. That's going to be the warmest day each day. Other than that, pretty much below average. Average for this time of year is about 59. We'll be back to 54 by Thursday, 53 by Friday, and 60% chance of rain on Sunday.